everybody, it's Cindy here from Hooked on Crafts, and today I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a very beginner-friendly dishcloth using the spiked granny stitch. This works up really fast, and I think it looks spectacular. So you're only going to need to know how to do a few basic stitches, a single crochet, a double crochet, and a chain stitch, and that's it. So for this project, I'm going to be using the Crafter's Secret yarn in the colorway Ocean Stripes by Hobby Lobby, a pair of scissors, a size H crochet hook or a 5.0 millimeter, and a yarn needle. So let's get started. Start with, we are going to be making a slip stitch and we are going to be chaining 36 chains. For this pattern, you will need to keep your chains, your foundation chain in a multiple of four. So you can make it however big or however small you would like it. My dishcloth is gonna be 10 inches by 10 inches, but this would be a great pattern for say a scarf or a baby blanket. Just keep your foundation chain in a multiple of four and you would be fine to adjust it to whatever size you would like. Once you get to the end of your foundation chain, you are going to skip the first three and you are going to do three double crochets into that fourth stitch from the hook. So three double crochets right here. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're going back into that same exact stitch, guys. So three double crochets. We're making kind of a cluster is what I call it. And then once you get those three double crochets in there, you are going to skip the next three stitches and do three double crochets into that fourth stitch. So you can see me counting them there to make sure that I have the right number. And again, three double crochets into that same stitch. And this one's gonna be a little wonky because it's your foundation chain. Don't worry about it, it's only a dishcloth. It will all work out fine in the end. Just keep going, guys. This is a fairly uh, beginner-friendly project. So skip three and do three double crochets. And you're gonna do this all the way to the very end of your foundation uh, row and I'll speed it up really quick so you don't have to be bored with me making it to the end of my foundation row. So three double crochets, skip three stitches, and do three double crochets all into that same stitch, all the way to the very end of your row. And once you get to the end of your row, you're going to do two double crochets into that very last stitch. So at the, at the end of this um, row and any row in this project, you're gonna do two double crochets, always two double crochets at the end. And then you're gonna chain three and turn your work. And this is what it should start looking like. For row two, we are going to make three double crochets into this uh, space here. So first of all, we're gonna do one double crochet right into the space. I'm not going in any chain, I'm just going into the space. For the second double crochet, we are though going to go into that middle stitch on the bottom row. So into your foundation row, do that middle stitch right there. We skipped three, so you're gonna go into the middle one and then kind of pull up your yarn so it's the same height as the other one and do another double crochet. And then for your third one, kind of move your work over and see that hole right there? We're gonna go right into that hole, not into a stitch again, but into that hole and do another double crochet. And then you're just gonna repeat this all the way down this row. So a double crochet into that space one double crochet right there. And then you are going to do one double crochet going into that middle stitch on your foundation chain. So all the way to the bottom and go into that stitch, pull your yarn up. Um, once you get it looped around there, pull your yarn up so that it's not squished together so much. Uh, the same height as your other stitch, double crochet. 
and then your last double crochet you are going to do again into that space not a, into a stitch but into that space it, sometimes if you're not paying attention you will catch a stitch and it makes your your uh, spike granny look a little weird so just be careful not to grab a stitch there and you're going to continue that all the way to the end of this row and we're just working into mostly the spaces and then we're dropping down on the middle one to catch that middle stitch on your foundation row and then when you get to the very end we're going to do two double crochets into that last stitch i'm working in the top of this stitch and chain three and we're going to turn our work so chain three and we're turning our work and now you can kind of see this pattern start to take place and this is what it's going to look like okay for your third row and this is going to be the repetitive row all the way through your project so again you're going to be working into that space you're going to do one double crochet into the space and then you're going to do one double crochet into that middle stitch of your cluster below it so again get that middle go through both loops of that middle stitch and kind of pull your yarn up so everything looks nice and not bunched up and then yarn over and then you're going to go into that space again not a stitch that's where you can mess up um, at least for me that was where i would mess up when i first started doing this and you're going to repeat this all the way down your row now this is a one row repeat pattern and this is your repetitive row right here so double chain and then you're going to double crochet rather into that top of the cluster stitch and you're going to double crochet into the space on the other side and you can see now my yarn starting to change colors and this is where the magic really happens and you can really start to see the stitches i love um, the self-striping yarns i let the yarn do the work for me i'm not going to color control this it's only a dishcloth and um, i think it looks fine i love the rich colors of this uh, colorway and so you're just going to repeat that all the way to the end of this row so double crochet into the space double crochet into that top stitch of your cluster so the middle stitch of your cluster and then double crochet onto the other side into the space and when you get to the end of the row and the end of every row you're going to do two double crochets into the last stitch so just find your stitch there do two double crochets chain three and turn your work and now you can really start to see that pattern and once you kind of get a few rows in there just kind of flatten them out and see how it's creating that great uh, spiked granny stitch for us I think this project works up really easy okay so when you get to the very end and I did lots of rows I did not count them um, but to close it off, because see, you have these spaces at the top of your work, and I didn't want those. So I'm going to chain one, and I'm going to turn my work. And now we're going to work a single crochet into every stitch. So single crochet, and then when you get to that space right there, you're going to drop down to the row below into your cluster and do a single crochet there also. You're going to grab that middle stitch of your cluster just the same way you were doing with the double crochets only we're single crocheting here and you should end up well for my project you should end up with 36 single crochets across this row because that's how many we started with on our foundation chain so it gets a little confusing because you're kind of going in between stitches to grab that one that drops down but it does work out so just 36 stitches um, single crochet and you're dropping down to grab that middle stitch in your cluster below when you get to the space there and it it works up really nice and really fast and it really doesn't use a lot of yarn for this stitch um, that's kind of why I made such a big one 
because I don't like a lot of leftover little scraps of yarn. So I wanted to use almost all of my ball, which I just had a very, very little left. And I thought that was perfect. And at the very end, I'm going to show you, I made this uh, just cloth in several different types of yarn and I will give you a sneak peek of what those look like. So you can see I'm just working into every stitch across and then drop down when you get to the space and you're going to close up that space by dropping down and grabbing that stitch below until you get all the way over to the other corner. And I was fiddling with my yarn a little bit here. That's just part of it when you're trying to record and keep your hands still. I hope you guys are liking these uh, short tutorials on different stitches for dishcloths. I love making dishcloths. It's one of my favorite quick projects to take when I'm on the go. Um, I can whip one up in no time flat and um, then I have them for around the house. So when you get to the very end, you're just going to do a single crochet into that last stitch. Don't forget to drop down at the very end there to grab that one. And then you're going to pull up and cut your yarn and just finish it off. And pull it through, tie it off, and then you're going to weave in your ends. And I give you kind of a brief look of how I weave in my ends. Um, I do have some other videos that show this in a little more detail. I was, but if you weaved in one end, you've weaved in them all. But I just like to go through, especially with a self-striping yarn, try to go through the same colors so that you can't see the tail that you're weaving in, um, if at all possible. And I just grab a few stitches, the back of them. I'm not going all the way through my work. I'm just grabbing the back of it. And then I'm going to pull my yarn through. And then I just weave it back the other way. And I'll do this. I try to do it three times if I leave my tail long enough. Sometimes I don't get that because I cut my tail too short. But if you weave it back and forth at least three times, you've got it going several different ways and then it won't come out in the wash. And I love, I mean, these are dishcloths, so you can just throw them in the dish, uh, in your washing machine and wash them up when they get dirty and they hold up for a long time. And here I am going back through the third time, trying to finish this off. And then I'm gonna trim my yarn as close to it as I possibly can. And we're done. And this is what it looks like. I think it turned out great. You could put a border around it. I'm gonna show you a few that I did and I did put a border around them, but I really don't think it's necessary with this stitch. I think it turned out uh, perfect on the sides. It's a nice flowy fabric. So it's gonna be great for washing my dishes. Now I did use a few different yarns. Like I said, um, I was at Hobby Lobby, so I picked up Hobby Lobby yarns that day. So this was like a little um, Yarn Bee uh, Sugar Wheel uh, Cotton Mini. And this, I could almost make two if I would have made them smaller. And then this is just your um, sugar and cream striped yarn. And I will tell you that I really enjoyed this Crafter Secret yarn more than the Sugar and Cream. Now, the one I'm showing you is not a striped yarn, but I did use a striped yarn for that project. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Leave me a comment. Tell me, is there a stitch that you would like to learn? I hope so, guys. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Keep on crocheting along. I'd love to see your work. Have a great day.